Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to another Adobe XD Masterclass. My name is Howard Pinsky, Senior XD Evangelist here at Adobe. Hope you're all doing well on this Friday afternoon. If you are tuning in live here on Behance, let me know in the chat who you are and where you're tuning in from. If you're tuning in on Twitter and you do want to chat along, definitely head on over to behance.net slash Adobe Live. But before we got dive into things, a big hello, good morning, afternoon, or evening to Arif and Tanya, Wade, Cornell. Great to see all of you. Hope you're having a fantastic week. Hope you're excited for the weekend. I know I certainly am. If you are finishing up Andrew Hawk Rattle's um, Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge, hope you all enjoyed that. And if you want to stick around for the XD Masterclass, you might learn something new. And you can bring in your Illustrator files directly into XD to prototype them, take advantage of a repeat grid, stacks, all sorts of different things. Hey, Faisal. Hey, Loy. Great to see you. Awesome. Are we from Bangladesh? Great to see you. Perfect. All right. So we're going to go ahead and hop over to my screen. There we go. It lagged for a second. And Web Donut. Great to see you. And Mercurial. Awesome. Happy Friday, indeed. Chris, great to see you as well. All right. So last week, we started the process of redesigning Blockbuster. And we want to really start thinking about what Blockbuster could look like in 2021 going into 2022. And here's a little bit of a preview of what we did and also what it could end up becoming. We're going to tackle some of these screens today. Twitter's video is a little bit pixelated still. They were supposed to fix that, but it still looks very pixelated. But if I hop over to Adobe XD, Here's what we tackled last week. So we worked on the splash page. So if you're an unregistered user or you haven't signed in yet, go to this page and you're going to see a few things. A logo, a little bit of a tagline, some sort of call to action. In this case, we chose to, you know, have a user enter their email and have a button to go ahead and play this. You're going to notice we have a video playing in the background, right? And then we have this login experience with a little bit of a hover effect. And we have this really cute login page with the logo that we create. A lot of fun. Now, today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be tackling the home screen. So once a user actually logs into this experience or signs up, they'll be taken to this home screen where it's going to display maybe a featured video or show or movie or whatever it might be. There'll be a navigation bar and then you'll be able to scroll to see additional content. And depending on how much time we have left at the end, um, you know, we might get a little bit fancy with some scrolling effects and hover and that sort of thing. And we'll be uploading a separate tutorial on that possibly next week. Cornell's asking, is this the last XD Masterclass of the year? I don't believe so. I think next week we're, we're going to be having one more and then we'll be on shutdown until the new year. Can't believe we're on almost at 2022 already. Week. And I'll remind anyone, if you have questions throughout the stream, definitely throw them in the chat on Behance. If you're watching on Twitter, head on over to behance.net slash Adobe Live so you can chat along. Alrighty. Now, typically, and this isn't always the case, but typically when you are designing and experiencing uh, TV, it's off. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to change the artboard color to a darker color. So I have the artboard selected and over within the properties inspector to the right of blue. But for the most part, this color is not going to be seen as much. So I'm going to just keep it, you know, very dark gray something in that area there. All right, now starting top to bottom, we're gonna start with the navigation bar up at the top, right? And what I'm thinking is, and maybe a notification bell as well. So let me go ahead and just drag out some guides just so I have things lined up nicely. Of course, you can also use things like your grid. So if you select your artboard up here, right down to the bottom, and I'll drag one out on the other side, right about there. All right. Perfect. Now, the logo at the top left hand corner, we have already designed the logo right over here. We have our, uh, you know, just the letter, the B, and then we also have the entire word mark on this page here. When you're dealing with navigation bars, you typically don't want to do six navigation links up there. It's already taken up a ton of room. So I'm going to just actually grab the logo. And what I should do, just in case the logo does end up changing, is turn this into a component. Now, I haven't really defined the size of this logo. So let me actually move it over here and quite a bit, right? So what I'm gonna do is 
you know, we're going to bring it down to, I don't know, somewhere about there, maybe. That looks a little now. But on this one here, you know, we have a lot of colors going on. We have white, we have blue, and we have yellow, which is definitely the colors that we're going with for this service. But in terms of a navigation logo, we want to keep it fairly solid. So something you definitely all of your other instances. Hot, if consider good. I'm going to pull it down just a touch. And then over to the right, like I mentioned earlier, we might want some navigation links. So to create the first one, I'm going to grab my text tool, shortcut key T, click, and then we'll do something like home, right? Now, in terms of the typeface, we have been using some fancy, too fancy. So I think for this, we'll stick with Museo, uh, Museo Sans, right? We were using that previously on the splash screen underneath the logo. And we'll try something like 18. Hey, Sanjeep, great to see links. You also don't want to go too light. But in this case, this will be the active indicator, right? So we have our home screen that, that we're on right now. So this one's going to be naturally a little bit heavier than some of the other ones. There are other ways you can indicate which screen you're on. We'll get to that in just a moment. But we also want a few additional links going over to the right. Things like movies, shows, live, favorites, so on and so forth. And we could, you know, create a repeat grid, which I've mentioned in the past, difficult to space them out properly. So in this case, we're going to be using a stack. So I have this one text link active. I'm going to pop into a group, command and control G, and I'm going to call this links. Is the stream buffering for anyone else or is it just me? Uh, let's see. Let's check it out. Looks like, yeah, it looks like there are some buffering issues. There are some uh, buffering issues, but hopefully we can take care of that shortly or hopefully it resolves itself too. So I do have my group created of links and oh, Wade said it's buffering too. Oh no, there are a few drop frames, but not nothing too crazy. Hmm, both places at once, I'm not sure. It's herky jerky for me. Ugh, I apologize, we'll figure that out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it. Hope everyone is doing great. Eee. So this one I'm gonna drop to, let's see. Still buffering, hmm, all right. Well, I'm gonna drop this one to about 700, something in that area there, right? And then I can dive in here and start, uh, you know, adjusting this. So this one might be movies, for example. And then as I duplicate, I can just do some like shows and live. It's gonna maintain that spacing. Just like that. All right. Let me, okay, while we're doing this, let me very, and if that's the one that's causing the problem, and then I can dive in here and start, whoop. there's me talking. Okay. Let's take a quick look before we continue. Yeah, there are, there are people over there. I don't know if that one, someone, uh, maybe Wade, if you want to hop over to Twitter, replay should be fine, hopefully. Um, yeah, someone hop over to Twitter. Let me know if that one is buffering as well. That out. Maybe I'll just kill the Twitter stream and hopefully that uh, takes care of that. All right, so we have our links looking pretty good. Now, I, I was talking earlier about indicating which page is active. And, you know, we have a little bit of a heavier weight on the home link, but the other ones, you know, it's a little bit difficult to really tell. Now, of course, we can drop the opacity of these ones a little bit, right? Or we can use something like a rectangle or a line to really indicate which. And then we're going to go ahead and choose our yellow. We're going to apply that as a border. And I'll bump this up in size a little bit. And there we go. That should do. So now we have our active indicator. We have our links and things are looking pretty good. Now, also over to the right, we might want a few additional elements. Like I mentioned, profile photo. If I grab my rect for all my Twitter friends, I'm going to try to kill that stream and see if that helps the YouTube stream because clearly my internet is not handling, even though my I don't see any issues on my end, I'm gonna kill the Twitter stream. I'm sorry, Twitter friends. If you wanna head over to uh, behance.net slash Adobe Live, hopefully it'll be a little bit better over there. So I'm gonna end this one. There we go. And let's take a quick peek at my output settings. I'm going to turn this off. Oh, it's on the wrong. I wonder if this is the problem. Hmm. I 
I think it was on the wrong um, encoding, encoder setting. Now I might have to end this very quickly and then restart it. Gotta love, uh, yeah, it was on the wrong encoder setting. That could be it. Okay, I'm gonna kill this. All right. So hopefully we are back. Hopefully the stream is a little bit better. I don't know how the encoder got switched over to something else, but yeah, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna refresh, oops. I'm gonna refresh this. I apologize for that. That So it might've been on my end actually. But hopefully we're good. Let me know in the chat if things are looking a little bit better now that I've refreshed the stream and switched over the encoder. All right, audio caught up, okay. Okay, so we should be back. I'm gonna continue. I will keep taking a, a peek over to make sure that things are looking okay. Oh, send Jeep is saying better. That's a good start. All right, seems all good now. All right, I must have switched the encoder by mistake. So that was definitely my fault. No buffering issues. We're good to go. All right, so. I've gone ahead and created my little profile icon right over here. Make sure that is kind of centered with some of the other elements, including the photo, the logo over to the right. Right about there, perfect. No buffering is used, better, awesome, okay. We're good to go. All right, so I've got my profile photo, uh, at least the rectangle that we're gonna be using. And then if I hop over to, let's say, Nucleo, for example, we can go ahead and find some icons that we're going to be using. Whoops, where did it go? There we go. So I'm going to hop over to the Coco icon library and look up something like bell or notification. Here we go. We have some really cute icons that we can be using. They're very stylistic. So, you know, it really depends on the project you're using or you're creating. Pop that in there. And like I mentioned on most streams, if you don't have access to icon libraries, if you do go ahead and hop into your plugins panel, you can actually download the icons for design plugin and search for something like bell or notification and you'll have access to open source icons that you can definitely use in your projects. All right, it's looking a little, I mean, it's not too bad. I was going to say it looks a little bit too small, but it's not terrible. I might want to bump it up just a little bit. That could do. And then I might want one more search icon. All right. Make that a little bit larger and then change the color to white. And it's a little bit too thin, I think. Now, this one here in particular is fill-based. So there, there are two ways we can thicken this up a little bit. We can either add a white border around it, right? And then play with the size, or some icons also have border-based icon or border-based versions, right? Um, but I think, you know, this could probably work and it looks a little bit better. I'm gonna bump it up in size just a touch more. There we go. Now, before we move on, we might want to make a few very small changes to this area. Number one, we're definitely going to want to place these into a group. We'll get to that in a second. And we also want maybe to fill in this icon at the top, right? The profile icon. Now, if you have a photo on your computer, you just pop it directly in there, or you can use a plugin like UI Faces. And they do have a few different sources you can pull from, let's say Unsplash. And then you can either apply randomly or you can select photos down at the bottom. But if we apply randomly, we've got, there we go, we've got a photo, right? Now, the next thing we might wanna do is on this notification bell, we might want to add a very small badge just to let users know that they have a notification, whether it's a new show or whatever it might be, right? So either inside the group or outside of the group, we can grab, let's say our ellipse tool, draw one out. And I'll change this to, let's say a nice pink right about here. That looks pretty good. And then just to add a bit of a cutout on the outside, 
There are two ways we can do this. If the background is gonna be consistent, we can add a border that matches that background color, right? And it gives the impression that there's a little bit of a cutout. But because we're gonna be adding either a photo or a video behind that very shortly, we might see some weird issues, right? So if there was something, let's say, a little bit blue back there, right? Something like that. Then we're gonna see that weird dark border around that badge, which we certainly don't wanna see. So in that case, what we might wanna do is simply add, you know, create a Boolean object. So if I duplicate this shape, I can use this one in the back, I can select the bell, and then right here at the top right-hand corner, I can create a subtraction Boolean object, right? And then if I turn this border off and then make this a little bit smaller, there we go, right? So we have our bell, we have a nice subtraction. And if we, just like we did before, if we test this out, no matter what color is back there, we'll be good to go. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these, pop them into a group. And now our navigation bar is complete. So I'm gonna select all this information here, group it and call this nav. Now, what we might have to do uh, shortly is add a little bit of an overlay back there, depending on the video or photo that we place in the background, which we should probably get to now. So, like I mentioned earlier, we might want to feature a movie or a show or whatever it might be that automatically plays in the background when this service and page loads. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a rectangle and draw it across the entire artboard. Now, depending on the size of the videos, you don't necessarily have to do that. You can just drag the video directly in, but I like creating shapes just so that I can very easily mask the video or photo directly in there, right? So if I hop over to Finder, I do have some videos from various services, including Adobe Stock, and I have this one of a shark. If you're afraid of sharks, I would look away now, but here's the video, nice blue, colorful, sort of colorful, very vibrant video, which I'm gonna drag directly into this rectangle. And once I have that in place, if I dive into the object mask and select that video, we can choose to play the video on tap automatically or no playback at all. In this case, we do want it to play automatically, so I will select that. And then if I open up the video heads up display, we have a few additional options. And the one I would really wanna focus on is the ability to loop this playback. So once it gets to the end, we do want this video to loop. Now, one other option, and I've covered this on YouTube, is you can create a component and have several states of different clips. So if this is a, you know, if this is a, a service or a movie or a show or whatever it might be about different underwater creatures, you can have one clip that has sharks, one clip that has jellyfish, one clip that has clownfish, whatever it might be, then you can use states and on your component to you know automatically cycle between those. And if you wanna see how that's done, youtube.com slash Howard and I do have a video there. All right, so we have our video in place and taking a look at the top, you know, the, the navigation links are mostly visible. They're not terrible. But if we go ahead and pop another video like this one of drafts, right? you're gonna notice that the links all of a sudden become very difficult to see. Now, some of you may be able to see it just fine. Some of you may not be able to see it. And we have to keep that in mind as designers that even though we can see something, some people may not be able to, right? So okay, what we might wanna do, let me actually go back to the shark video, is we may want to add a bit of an overlay back there. And there are a few ways we can do this depending on the direction of your design, right? So if I grab my rectangle, draw one out, I'm gonna place it behind the navigation. One way to do it is just to do a solid black bar, right? And maybe drop the opacity a little bit. Or if you wanna get fancy, you can actually add a background blur. Maybe I'll blur it completely and then drop the brightness, right? And that looks okay. It's a little bit thick, so I would probably grab the navigation bar and move it up a little bit. It doesn't look too bad, and especially if you have videos back there, right? The background blur interacts with those videos really nicely. And if I go back and pop the drafts in there, we can still see those navigation links pretty well. And if you can't, you can definitely, you know, experiment a little bit with the brightness, but it's not bad, right? 
Now that's one option. Another option, and I think I would probably prefer this option that I'm gonna show right now, is to add a bit of a gradient in the background. And you know, the nice thing about this is it's very subtle. So you don't have this big chunky bar at the top. You can still have your navigation links a little bit lower down. So in this case, I'm gonna hop open the fill, switch it over to linear gradient, and I want both colors to be solid black. So top color is gonna be black, bottom color is gonna be black, but the opacity of the bottom color is gonna be set to zero. Now, as I'm doing that, you're noticing nothing is happening. And that's because I added a background blur previously. So by default, that will not happen. But if you have a background blur, definitely keep that in mind that the opacity of your gradients will not affect the background blur. So I have that gradient back there. It looks okay, but in this case, it's a little bit too strong. So I can just drop the opacity just a little bit. Now, of course, depending on what's back there, you may want a harsher gradient, you may want a more subtle gradient, but it just adds a little bit of separation back there. So your white links will be a little bit more visible against the background, right? Perfect, okay. So we have our navigation, we have our video in the foreground, and now we wanna start adding some context about this particular show or whatever it might be, right? So let's start with maybe the title of the show. And this might be broken into two different layers. Into the deep, and then there might be another line that says something like depths, right? So I'm gonna make this a little bit larger. And in terms of the typeface, there are so many different directions we can go with this. And if you, if you watch Netflix or Hulu or Amazon Prime or whatever it might be, you might have noticed that all the titles in some cases are very different in terms of the typefaces. So they, they don't necessarily have to be consistent. They could change based on the actual content you're trying to promote. So in this one, something like Astoria might be a fun typeface to go with. It's a little bit, you know, a little bit condensed. They also have various versions, so we can do something like extra bold condensed, right? And then we can bump that up in size a little bit. Let's try about 80. There we go. And Cornell saying, what if you put a rectangle with background blur on top of the gradient or mask it somehow? Would that work? Uh, da, 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 I don't think so, because I think the, the background blur is always going to be basically a solid shape. So I don't think it'll... It's a good question. I don't know. Maybe I'll try that one time. Um, or if Cornell, if you want to try it, let me know if that works. But I don't think it will. At least not the way you might want it to. So we have our uh, first bit of the title, and then the second bit is going to be depths. Now, the reason I'm doing it into two different layers is, you know, I can certainly do something like like this, right? But this gives me a little bit more control over the sizing. Now, I can, I can certainly, you know, have it all in one layer and adjust the sizing of individual words. But I can just bump this up a little bit and then pop it into place. So we have... Our second word right about here and then we may also want a little bit of a header sometimes it'll say something like you know exclusive or original or or just you know some clever fancy header right so right above here i might want to do something like must see now yes i know i i incorrectly spelled that right it should be c but it's a little bit of a fun play on words sea ocean I don't know, it's probably not that funny, but I'm gonna run with it. I'm gonna change this to yellow so it stands out a little bit and then experiment with the sizing a touch. Maybe I'll line it up with the O, at least the word into, right? So if I play this, that's looking okay. Now, below this section, we may also want to add in not just a description of what this show or movie is, but also, wait, it says, I see what you're doing. Mm, very clever. But also, you know, things like TV ratings, what category this is in, how, how long it is, and maybe how many episodes are part of it. So this is another good case we can use something like, uh, you know, stacks, for example. So if I type out something like TV G, and then for this, because we, you know, we're getting very small with this, these text layers, must see masterclass. Mm, I like that. 
So because we're getting very small with the text layers, we might want to revert to something like, you know, a non-condensed weight, right? Something like Roman or medium could work. And then I'll probably just switch this back over to white and then drop this in size as well. We don't necessarily want this section to be too large, right? Can we create outline text in XD? So Arsham, there are a few ways you can do this. So one, you can you know turn off the fill and set a border just like this, right? But if you wanted this border to become a solid object, then if you go into the object menu, you're going to go down to path and then outline stroke, which might be what you're referring to. And that will take that and, you know, convert into a solid object. So you can then go ahead and apply things like linear gradients or all sorts of different additional styles, which is a little bit of a fun effect, right? And you can apply additional borders on top of that as well. So if I wanted to do something crazy like that, don't know why I would, but, you know, you can definitely do that. All right. So we've got our first text layer right over here. It says TVG. This is essentially the, the rating of the show. And we might want a few additional ones going across. So we can use a very similar technique that we did with the navigation links at the top. So if I place it into a group, I'll just call this info and then turn a stack on within the properties inspector. Now I can dive in and duplicate and add some additional Let's see, this would, this would be maybe documentary. And then 120 minutes. And finally, maybe there'll be five episodes. And this could be a way for, you know, people who are browsing on the web to actually click on this to see the additional episode. So I'm going to underline it just to indicate that this is a link. Now, looking at this here, it's a big jumbled mess, right? We don't want all these text layers to be right on top of each other. We also want to separate them somehow. So not only can we increase the spacing, right? We can actually also add maybe a little bit of a separator, whether it's a line or a dot or whatever. I think that will do. Oh no, buffering again. Okay, I don't know what's going on now. Something bad happened. Uh-oh. Hmm. That's really bizarre because my internet seems to be okay, but let's check... And on YouTube, this it, YouTube says the stream is very healthy right now. I don't know what's happening. The stream is back. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's you. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's you. I don't know. Back now. Okay, we're good. Maybe there's a little bit of a blip. Everything seems okay on my end, but eh, I don't know. Streaming is weird sometimes. All right, where were we? I don't even know where we were. Okay, so we just created the, uh, you know, the info right at the bottom and then below that we may also want a description of what this particular show or movie is so i'm going to grab the text tool one more time and draw one out now because we've had so many technical issues i'm not going to sit here and type out the entire thing i will copy and paste it whoops definitely don't want that right copy i'm going to paste the style there Beautiful. And in terms of the actual styling, I think this looks pretty good, but I might want to separate this, the line height a little bit, just so it's a little bit more, a little bit easier to read, right? <laughs> that could do. All right. And then finally, right down below this, we may also want some call to action. Things like play the video or movie, watch the trailer, and maybe even a, a button to play the movie or series immediately do we want them to add it i think we probably want them to play the the series right away right so i'm going to draw out a button here and we might want to go for our yellow now this yellow is very striking right so it's probably okay if we tweak the yellow a little bit either globally or just on these buttons might want to just introduce a little bit of orange in there is it is it buffering again oh no Umicorn saying refresh, refresh, refresh. Or maybe she's just talking to a reef who's uh, might be having some issues as well. Always a fun time, right? All right. And then inside here, we'll just do play, right? Whoop. Don't want the border on there. Did we have a border on this? No, we didn't. Okay. Good on my end. Okay, I think we're okay. Now... In terms of the color of the text layer, 
white on yellow, a little bit muddy, right? A little bit difficult to see. So if we switch over to our blue, it's not bad, but this blue in particular is a little bit too vibrant. So we may want to keep in that blue range, especially with the ocean video in the background, but maybe we'll just drop it a little bit. Something about there, right? That could do. And then I might want to bump up the weight a little bit to bold. And then beside the text on the left-hand side, we might want a little bit of an icon just to indicate that this will play the video. It's not completely necessary, but it certainly helps in some cases, right? So something like maybe play, and I'll grab this icon and pop it in here. Sample this color. And we're good to go. Now to make sure that if I do change the text layer or the icon or whatever it might be, I want to make sure that the button automatically adjusts. So if I select all the elements here, the background, the text, and the icon, place into a group, button play, I can turn this into a component or I can keep it as a group. I think I'm going to turn it into a component just so that I can create different states and you know so on and so forth. There we go. But I want to make sure that I have a stack and padding enabled within the properties inspector. That way I can not only adjust, you know, the padding around it, but I can also adjust the actual layers. So if I, let's say, play movie or whatever it might be, right? It, the buttons are going to automatically adjust really nicely. Now, taking a look at that, things are looking a little bit funky. And that's the real, that's the big importance of previewing your prototype and design as you're going because it looks okay here but when I play it it just yeah things look a little bit strange right so let's go ahead and maybe increase the padding a little bit so it's a little bit chunkier all right maybe I'll add a little bit more padding on the side let's try 24 yeah possibly might want to increase it a little bit more on the top and bottom that's a little bit better and then i was going to make sure i'm going to round out these corners again that could do and i might actually drop this in, in weight a little bit more maybe to medium eh, i don't know drop this in size a little bit that feels a little bit better and the icon possibly i'll just make a little bit larger all right, that could do. Probably not perfect, but it's looking okay. And then, like I mentioned, we may want a few additional eye, uh, buttons. So over to the right, maybe one to watch the trailer, for example. So if I duplicate this over, now actually before I do that, it might make a little bit more sense to actually create the second button as a state, for example. Hey, Samuel. Uh, Samuel says, Master of XD, thank you for your skill sharing. You're welcome. I'm glad I have helped you, hopefully in your journeys. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a state, new state, and this will be secondary, which is our outline button. And now I can dive in here and maybe I'll turn the fill off and set a white border. I'll change this to white, change this to white as well. Perfect. Hey, Kara. Kara says, I almost missed Fancy Friday again. Well, if Anyone else has been watching the stream for the last uh, 40 minutes has been very fancy. We've been having a lot of buffering issues. I think we figured it out. But yeah, either my internet or YouTube or something has just been not cooperating today. So we've got our default state and our secondary state. So if I duplicate this over, I can switch over to our secondary. Watch, where did it go? Trailer, there we go. And in a case like this, I would probably end up changing the actual icon just so it's a little bit different from the original. But if we do have time, we can definitely uh, tackle that. And possibly, looking at this now, it's a little bit muddy. So what I might want to do, and I can do this on the main component, is add a little bit of a background back there. Nothing too crazy, but just a little bit, just so that if like the navigation bar, if the background is a little bit lighter, then you'll still have a little bit of contrast back there. But, you know, definitely 
experiment and see what works best. And then finally, over on this side, we're gonna have one more button. And this will just be to add. So very quickly, I'll just grab my line tool. Let's make a little bit of an add button or a plus button, I should say. Duplicate and rotate 90 degrees. And there we go, we've got a plus button. Perfect, all right. So I'm gonna group these elements here. I'm gonna select all the buttons, pop those into a group. Yeah. And then I wanna make sure to turn a stack on in the properties inspector, just so that we can, if we needed to, we can always dive in here and swap the position of the buttons. I'm pretty happy with the position of these ones. It makes a lot of sense, but in some cases you may actually want to swap them. Now, it does look like things are not lined up perfectly, but we can certainly make some changes later on uh, once we start, you know, tweaking this. All right. Things are looking pretty good. We're getting there. I'm gonna make sure that this snaps into place. And what we might wanna do now is right down below, we may want a, another section very similar to this one over here, which we can actually probably just cheat a little bit and copy, paste, snap into place. And there we go. Actually, I wanna make sure that, uh, that could work. Maybe down here, it might be something like continue watching. And this might be an area that maybe you've already started watching some shows and you know, you know, down here, you'll be able to scroll and continue watching some of those at your leisure, right? Let's drop this in size a little bit because it's definitely not the main focus in this case. Now, one thing we might experience is very similar to the navigation bar at the top is down here, depending on the background, it might be a little bit difficult to see some of this content. And thinking about what might also be down below this artboard, right? We might want a nice transition between the video and this section down at the bottom, which I'm actually going to darken a little bit more. And this is where another overlay might come into play. So actually, I can grab this overlay at the top and duplicate it downwards. And what I'll want to do is the solid color is going to be on the bottom. So if I flip it vertically, I can move it down, right? And the bottom color, I'm gonna choose this one over here. And I might want this one to be a little bit longer than the one at the top. So I'll just drag this up a little bit. That way, if I do go ahead and launch, right, we can see the entire video here. But if I scroll down, we have this nice transition from the video. And you can see a little bit of, it, bit of it right there in some cases. So what we we'll want to do is just make sure that this ends right about there. That looks a little bit better. Perfect, okay. Just wanna make sure that we have a nice gradient so that it fades out nicely and we don't have any harsh lines at the bottom. Faisal is saying, Howard is wearing red today. Is that a hint? about you will be Santa. <laughs> I will definitely not be dressing up as Santa. Um, I originally had a black shirt on, but uh, it felt a little bit scratchy, so I just changed into a red one. All right, information that no one probably needed to know. Perfect, okay, so we have our continue watching section at the bottom. Now, we have about 10 minutes left. Let's try to tackle a fun scrolling technique. I know a lot of people want scroll triggers in XD and maybe one day we will get them. But until then, there are workarounds, right? So what we're gonna do is let's create one more section down here. And maybe this will be, let's say, block buster hits. And I will be uploading a separate video on YouTube probably next week, possibly, about this technique. So we'll see. So maybe in this section, we'll just want three videos. Make those larger. Make sure everything snaps nicely. All right, and just, you know, just so it doesn't look a little bit too repetitive, I am going to select these cards and we're gonna use the movie posters plugin. And let's go for 
Can we do 2022? Is that even a thing yet? Will that work? Or will I explode the internet? Oh, okay. Well, that's 2021, but that's okay. It will do. So we have some different shows and, and uh, you know, cards down here. What I might want to do is initially, when I scroll down, I don't want these cards to be seen, right? But when I get to this area, I would love for the cards to automatically kind of like pop into view. And I might also want two sections, right? So let's duplicate this or let's drag this down a little bit. And we'll add one more section down here at the bottom. And let's choose animation and maybe we'll do, I don't know, 20, okay, hold on. Animation 2019. Perfect. Okay, so we have some different content down here. So like I mentioned, we might want, um, you know, the cards to kind of pop in. More buffering? Oh, no, maybe not. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to utilize hover effects to make this happen. So I'm going to create a component of this section over here, including the text component, right? And initially what we want to do is design it how it's going to look before the cards pop into view. So I'm going to dive in here. I'm going to select the movies. And again, I'm going to explain all of this on YouTube, hopefully next week. I'm going to... Don't want to do that. Turn off responsive resize, maybe. There we go. Spread them apart and move the title over to the side, right? Perfect. So that's state one. And we want to make sure that all of this is set to 0% opacity. And then we want to create one more state. Uh, make sure it's a hover state, right? And the audio is... Uh, audio is out of sync. I don't know what's happening anymore. I'll, I'll look into things afterwards and see if I can figure it out. But with this new hover state, what we want to do is basically revert those changes. So you can do it backwards if you want, if you feel a bit more comfortable. But... I'm going to bring these movies in. Definitely want to make them bigger. Like we did before. Now, because I have responsive resize on the default state, let me turn that off for a second. Ah. Okay, let me do this. Bring those in, there we go. I think I messed with the uh, the size a little bit too much. Let me let me undo this, give me a sec. I think responsive resize broke it. Audio's okay now, okay. I don't know what's happening. I'm just gonna copy this and then we're gonna go back. All right, this should do. So we have our first state and we have our second state, right? default state and hover state. Now, what's going to happen is when we press play initially, that section will not be visible, but when we scroll down, it's going to automatically come into play. So again, no hover or no scroll effects, but we can kind of fake it, right? But if we also wanted these ones to come into play, what we're going to do is we want to place these into a larger component with the component that we just created. So. I am going to select this, this, and the component, create a larger component, and of course the inner component was converted into an instance, and I'm going to dive in here, separate these, drop it to zero, and then we're going to create one more new hover state, bring these back in, over, and turn it on, right? So now we have a larger component with another component inside of it. And then if we press, go ahead and press play, we can scroll down, right? Nothing's there, but we, as we continue scrolling, those movies come into play and we can scroll again and those ones come into play. And as we scroll back up, right? In and out. So again, no fancy uh, scroll triggers or anything like that. But in some cases you can certainly fake some of that stuff using hover effects. And you can have 
additional components inside of this that have different movies. So right, so down here, we have our hover effect, we have our other component here with a hover state. Let's add, uh, actually, you know what we can do is maybe, no, this one's fine. Um, what else do we wanna do? I'm trying to think of you know, all the different sections. Maybe crime shows you'll love. And we'll dive in here and change the images. Do we have a crime feature? Probably not. Or maybe, yeah, that'll do. 1965, old horror movies. Right? Now, because we didn't also update the default state, it's gonna look a little bit strange during the transition, but let's check it out, right? So we have our first section, second section, and our third section. Now, because we have the second section as a separate component, that's not inside the, or the third is not inside the second, we, we ran into a little bit of a problem, right? But if you organize things properly, it'll look great. That's the importance of really, uh, you know, taking your time to think things through and planning them forward a little bit. Okay. Where are we? So we have our splash screen, which is looking pretty good. And if I go ahead and let's say the login button, I can wire this up over on this side. Actually, no, login we want to keep, but maybe from the actual login state, we can drag this over to this artboard. And we don't want any fancy transitions. We'll just do a simple transition with maybe no animation, or we can do a little bit of a dissolve possibly. That could work. Let me switch this back over to default. Login, and we're in, right? And then we have, of course, our section down at the bottom that brings in the posters. Now we can take this even further. We can add, you know, things like search functionality and, you know, hover states on these buttons as well. But maybe very quickly, considering we have like two minutes left, we can very quickly add a search screen that we can use either as an overlay or a completely different screen, right? And we can take some elements from here. Maybe the video, we have our movies. Let's grab the movies here. Paste those there. And maybe we'll grab the gradient. We'll paste that as well. Something like that. Search your favorite movies, TV shows, live content. Right, something like that. I'll make sure to center this. And we'll very quickly actually just grab this element here, just so we can kind of make a quick search field. Uh, what's a what's a current movie that we have? Um, what do we have on here? I don't know. Jungle Book. This would obviously be a search icon, but that's okay. We'll just leave that as is. And then maybe there'll be some examples or frequently searched movies down here. It's not the prettiest, but it could work, right? And then essentially from this navigation bar, if we select the search icon, we can drag this over to the search artboard, and then we can set up an overlay, for example. Of course, there's many ways you can do this, but if you set up an overlay, then I go ahead and press play. Don't wanna do that. We wanna make sure that the background is enabled, right? And there we go. And of course you can have a close button, so on and so forth. So. That's going to wrap it up for today. Again, I do apologize for all the streaming and buffering issues. Hopefully we get that resolved for next week. I think I figured it out. I think it was that encoder that got switched for some strange reason. But 
Big thank you to everyone who has tuned in. Kyle T. Webster is coming up in just a few minutes. I'll be back next week but for the last masterclass of the year. And we'll be, of course, back uh, in 2022. But thanks again, and I'll see you all next time.